Eyewitness News. You're looking at live News Copter 7 pictures. A truck has gone out of control in Nyack, leaving behind a long path of destruction. We'll be live there. Plus, an incredible survivor story tonight. A woman badly burned in the World Trade Center is released from the hospital. We're glad you've joined us. Good afternoon. I'm Rob Hanrahan. I'm Roz Abrams. We begin with that truck that went out of control. It slammed into cars and eventually hit a building before it finally stopped. Investigators are on the scene right now trying to figure out what happened. Nina Pineda live in Nyack in Rockland County with the very latest information. Nina. Roz, when an authority has got the 911 call about what happened, they were certain there was going to be a number of injuries and they were hoping there wasn't going to be any fatalities. Imagine this. This truck came careening down the street. The driver who was inside right behind this building was able to walk away from this carnage. Before he hit the building, however, we're going to come over here. You can see the firefighters. They're standing by for some flare-ups. And actually, I'm going to get out of the way here because it looks like they might be getting ready to put something out right now. Um, before he hit this into the building, he hit into these cars while these men are standing. And they were very worried because there was a natural gas leak after he smashed into the cars, then hit the building. The moving van picked up speed as it rolled out of control down Nyack's narrow Main Street, smashing parked cars into the air before careening onto the sidewalk and crashing into a building. It is absolutely incredible to me that no one was killed or, you know, or, or even injured. Chris Chase watched the moving van as it just missed his storefront window and crashed into the antique shop and realty office as it burst into flames. The truck was traveling eastbound, uh -huh. hit numerous parked cars, careened into the building, uh, hit a gas main. Both the van and the buildings in the area were engulfed in flames. Firefighters and police responded quickly, immediately shutting the gas lines off and keeping the flames from taking out the entire block. The problem we had was getting to the shutoffs because the truck was in the way and the gas was burning as well as the buildings were burning so we had a difficult time getting to them but eventually we, uh, Orange and Rockland was able to get in there and uh, shut them off. You're looking at live pictures now over the scene where we are right now in downtown Nyack. They have the entire block shut off. They were very worried that the cars that were piled on top of each other were going to roll down the hill. They were also very concerned about the truck catching on fire again. What the problem was when the fire department got here is the the electrical wires that were hanging over the van, they were very worried about it being on fire. And actually, somebody from O&R Gas Company had to get underneath the van, crawl underneath the burning van, and shut off the natural gas line, was able to do that successfully. Again, the only injuries were to the driver of the moving van, whose company is right next door to this block. And he was taken to the hospital. He was able to walk away from here. No pedestrians and everyone that was in the shops were able to run away. So they are just very grateful for that here in downtown Nyack. That's the latest. I'm Nina Pineda, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Nina. Amazing stuff. A tough day on Wall Street today. Stocks took a beating with both the NASDAQ and Dow dropping significantly. Poor earnings reports and concerns about the accounting practices of other companies sent the markets into a tumble. By the end of the day, the Dow had lost 247 points. It closed at 96.18. The NASDAQ also took a hit, dropping 51 points, nearly 3%. It closed at 18.92. Activists who will protest at the World Economic Forum say police are portraying them as terrorists and street thugs. Today, they spoke out about their protest plans. Cheryl Fiendaka live on the east side with details. Cheryl. Well, Roz, they say that they will be both peaceful but vocal. Dozens of groups are planning on protesting against the World Economic Summit and its goals. They say that they are part of a movement for global justice and are taking their anti-capitalist is a message to the streets. They've spent the last several days painting and preparing for the World Economic Forum, or the WEF as it's called. Arts in Action is just one member of a broad-based coalition planning to protest against what they say is the forum's message, globalization and capitalism. The World Economic Forum is making us all poor, destroying our environment and that the alternative is uh, a, a people power to, to rebuild our community, rebuild New York. There's also two other folks here from Switzerland. Earlier this morning, dozens of groups met with the media to discuss the reasons for their planned demonstrations and say they will be peaceful. We're here to be very vocal and to make sure that, that our right to, to speak is, 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 uh, is, is honored to the letter. Nothing we're going to do as should give people any cause for alarm. However, I think we should also emphasize 
insofar as there's a, something disrupting the city, it's the World Economic Forum itself. The forum will be held at the World of Astoria starting tomorrow and will bring together world leaders and business leaders to discuss global issues and economic growth. Anticipating demonstrations and protests, the NYPD has been training for all possibilities and has reviewed tapes of incidents at previous World Economic Summits in Seattle and Italy, where protesters clashed with police. Something the police commissioner has said will not be tolerated here. Security will be tight in and around the hotel. Several streets will be closed starting at 5 a.m. tomorrow, and checkpoints will be set up for both vehicles and pedestrians. Still, many people who work and live in the area are concerned, but say they'll put up with the inconvenience. Life goes on, and if we cave into the terrorists, I think it's a mistake. Well, anyone who plans to be east on 59th Street on the south side should be prepared to have their IDs checked, have their bags checked. Many of the streets, of course, in the area will be closed. The subway system, of course, will be running. We're live on the east side. I'm Cheryl Fiandaka, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Cheryl. A dozen Port Authority employees are charged tonight with stealing thousands of dollars meant for the victims of the World Trade Center attack. The Manhattan District Attorney says the workers all escaped the attack safely and all were paid by the Port Authority for missed work still. They allegedly filed false claims and received emergency aid from charities, including the American Red Cross. The district attorney had a message for anyone else who may try to do the same thing. If you do that, you're trying to take advantage of, uh, of the relief funds, and then you're going to be, uh, you're going to be prosecuted. Five other people were also charged today with stealing from charities. You may not believe what they tried to get away with. We'll have more on this story. It'll be coming up for you on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. A New York City school custodian is facing charges of sexual abuse. Police say the 35-year-old worker may have been abusing a girl for the past four years on school property. Lisa Calagrassi has the latest from the Bronx. News of the arrest of custodian Joseph Kremen came as a shock to students and teachers at this Bronx school. Maxine Nodell, a high school teacher who works on the top floor of the same building, says she never saw anything suspicious. I would see him every morning and he was always very pleasant to work with and uh, he struck me as being, you know, professional within the realm of what he did here for the school. I would never imagine, would never imagine that he would do something like this. Kremen was arrested yesterday and charged with rape after an incident with the girl at the school on Friday. But the authorities say sexual relations between the two began when the girl was 11 and that all the incidents took place on school property. Parents of students of nearby elementary school, PS61, say the entire incident is unsettling. I live in the neighborhood, and I don't think things like that should be happening in any high school, any school in the, in the city. The Board of Education fired Kremen, but this teacher says the school needs to do more to reassure the student body and parents. I think the school should do a thorough investigation. I think the, stu the school should, um, the principal should interview many, many students privately along with the guidance counselor to make sure that this didn't happen to other students as well. I think they need to um, have counseling for the kids because some kids might be afraid to trust professionals in the school. Kremen was arraigned on charges this morning. He's now charged with rape, sexual abuse, sexual misconduct, and endangering the welfare of a minor. In the West Farm section of the Bronx, Lisa Calagrassi, ABC7 Eyewitness News. New violence in the Middle East. Israeli troops armed with guns and tanks raided a Palestinian village on the West Bank, arresting three suspected militants. Jim Dolan is in the Middle East and joins us live from Jerusalem with more. Jim. Good evening, Roz. Israel is a place just now with not one, but two wars raging out of control. The first, you know, between the Israelis and the Palestinians, the death toll of which seems to mount by the day and for which nobody seems to have a reasonable way out. The other war, though, is between the people on both sides who want this war and need this war and the rest of the people, the majority of the people who just want their lives back. Guess who's winning that one? In Bejala on the West Bank, the daily and deadly volley of back-and-forth gunfire continues with Tanzim soldiers firing on Israeli defense positions. Overnight, Israeli tanks rolled into the Palestinian village of Artas and arrested three terrorism suspects. And so it goes, with the people of both communities left to clean up the mess. On Jaffa Street in Jerusalem today, workers were replacing the windows blown out by Sunday's suicide bomber attack there. I was with my back to the streets, and it's taken a minute, and I feel some 
big, big, big uh, bomb. 20 people were hurt, two were killed, and so today the military and police were everywhere, walking the streets and peering down from rooftops, sharpshooters on every building. But nobody here suffers any illusions about the nature of terror or of this conflict. I can show you hundred ways to go in, inside here without nobody asking you who are you, even. It's not the answer from that. As much security as there is, there's not enough security. It's not enough security. Sometimes it's ladies, tomorrow maybe it will be boys that not care. The suicide bomber on Sunday was a woman, and that has changed security here dramatically. In the past, Israeli security knew exactly who they were looking for because suicide bombers were always basically the same. They were young, men, always men, uneducated and without strong family ties. Not anymore. In recent months, one suicide bomber was the father of four children. Three of them were college students and now, of course, a woman. How do you profile when a suicide bomber could be anyone? Does that change the way security is enforced in any way? Does it change a profile? How, how does it alter security? It simply instills much better in the hearts and understanding of the people here. That those who are behind it, that is Mr. Arafat. And the Palestinian Authority have no constraints whatsoever. They'll send their people to die. They have no regard to human life. And so for the first time today, Muslim women, because of their faith particularly sensitive about being touched by anyone, were patted down by female Israeli soldiers. I was very uh, astonished and uh, I couldn't believe it. I, I had to laugh just to encourage myself to take it as it is. Life as it is. Tonight at 11, we're going to talk about a new Israeli security plan that may change life as it is for both sides considerably as Israel discusses building for the first time walls and fences, a Middle East iron curtain separating Israel from the territories. We'll talk about that tonight at 11 for now. Reporting live from Jerusalem, Jim Dolan, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Jim. On to Afghanistan and the war on terror. The Pentagon says five U.S. soldiers were injured in an accident involving a forklift in Afghanistan. The most seriously injured soldier has been airlifted to Germany. The number of injured has also climbed to 16 in the wake of yesterday's helicopter crash in eastern Afghanistan. Afghanistan's interim leader, Hamid Karzai, said today in Washington that his government would never abandon the war against terrorism. Karzai also said that democracy will thrive in his country and that elections will be held there in two years. In Kabul, tribal leaders prayed as Afghanistan's national flag was raised for the first time in decades. And Brigadier General Donald Worcester arrived in the Philippines today. He'll be taking command of U.S. soldiers as they conduct joint military training exercises with Filipino soldiers later on this week. Rob, we've got a breaking story we want to tell everybody about. John Del Giorno is over the scene in the Bronx where there has been a bus accident. John. Roz, you're looking at live pictures here of Broadway in the Bronx. We're right next to Van Cortland Park where apparently a bus has had a head-on collision with a vehicle here on the northbound side of Broadway. This accident happened about 4.30 this evening. You can see police are still on the scene investigating the accident. This has been declared what EMS calls a multiple casualty incident. We don't have an exact number confirmed by EMS, an exact number of injuries, but we do know that several people are being treated for injuries sustained in this accident. Again, this is on Broadway, right next to Van Cortland Park. Obviously, you want to avoid this area for quite some time while this head-on collision is being investigated. And we are live over the Bronx. John Del Giorno, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, John. We'll stay on top of that story. Still ahead tonight, President Bush's niece has been arrested. We'll have the details. Also an amazing survivor story. We will hear from a World Trade Center victim as she is finally released from the hospital. Plus, looking to lower your car insurance? Seven's on your side with some tips to save you money. And can Mike Tyson convince officials to give him another boxing license after last week's brawl? That story is ahead on Eyewitness News. Next, Oprah, one of the most severe cases of child abuse in California history. The little boy tortured for eight brutal years by his own demented mother. Starved, poisoned, stabbed, burned, and beaten. The true story read by millions. He was the child called it. Now, meet the unforgettable man named Dave. Next, Oprah. Tomorrow at 4, followed by Eyewitness News, right here on ABC7. Siemens One Day Sale. New furniture, low sale prices, and no payments at all until April 2003, or an additional cash discount. Wednesday only, Siemens One Day Sale. <laughs> 
You sure this is gonna work? We do this all the time. Come on, let's go. I got him. Oh, it's cold. Oh, freezing. Oh, my God. If you have another one, you're gonna need it. I'm getting hot. Eat a Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich seasoned with our own blend of pepper and spices, and you get a spicy hit that makes you feel warm all over. Perfect for that low-budget winter vacation. Sunblock? Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. When you're hot, you're hot. Remember, Wendy's pickup windows open on midnight so you can eat great even late. I was really heavy and I knew I needed to lose weight. But when you're busy cooking for your family and you have a job that has unpredictable hours, I knew I couldn't keep to the restrictions of a diet. Then I found out Jenny Craig customizes plans just for me. Call 1-800-JENNY-20 and ask about the new Ultimate Choice program for the new year. Lose all the weight you want in 2002 for $49 plus the cost of food. With Jenny Craig, I lost 80 pounds. It changed my life without changing the way that I live. Think it? Do it. With Dodge Durango SXT, V8 power at a price no other SUV can touch. Kicking CD sound system, big wheels and tires, and roof rack. All for around $25,000. Better get it in gear. Grab Dodge's 7100 powertrain pledge, plus $1,500 cash allowance or low financing. Ford, GM, and Toyota don't match this. Siemens one day sale. Low sale prices. Immediate delivery. And no payments at all until April 2003. Wednesday only. Siemens one day sale. Tomorrow morning to find the major highway that's become a major headache. I'm Joe Nolan. I'll make you aware of the traffic problems before you hit the road so you don't get stuck. That plus your wake up forecast. Watch Eyewitness News this morning, tomorrow morning only on ABC 7. President Bush is uh, busy going over his State of the Union speech, which is set for tonight. This is Mr. Bush's third address to Congress, and he's got a lot of ground to cover. David Ushery in Washington. He joins us now with the details. David. A lot of ground indeed, Rob. Good evening to you from Washington. The latest polls, of course, showing that President Bush is extraordinarily popular with the American people right now as he leads this war on terrorism. But other polls showing that Americans are greatly concerned about the economy and their overall economic health. And so the president must balance those themes tonight. The White House saying he will also make a carefully worded and not direct reference to the Enron scandal. At a White House breakfast meeting this morning, the president outlined his State of the Union address for congressional leaders. They emerged offering broad support on at least one of his major themes, the war on terrorism. There is a great deal of mutuality in our agendas. The president wants to address, as he should, uh, the war on terror and and uh, homeland security and of course uh, as we have from the very beginning there's been a great deal of bipartisan support for the effort uh, that he has undertaken uh, obviously there's a, a, a tremendous interest in a number of domestic issues as well president bush enjoys soaring public approval ratings as he delivers his first state of the union address the days of his narrow election victory long behind him and the country for that matter september 11th changed his presidency and will no doubt dominate his speech to congress and the nation tonight but Daschle and the Democrats have been sparring with Bush and the Republicans in recent days as they try to focus on his domestic agenda and the struggling economy. Bush is expected to try and rally the nation on those fronts as well. This is a president who's not going to ignore domestic issues. I predict that a lot of his speech will be focused on jobs and, and volunteerism and what we have learned from this experience and how we do need to come together and do the right thing for economic growth. And the White House says the president will talk about the need for accountability in corporate America and for federal protection of workers' pensions. That's apparently as close as he will come to discussing the Enron scandal that's overshadowing his administration. He is outraged that many people who worked so hard and were so loyal to this company for so long have literally lost their life savings. And that's not right. It's not fair. And as he said, this stinks. But again, the president expected to acknowledge the hero heroics of those who've led this fight against terrorism and also acknowledge those who've led the recovery of New York. Among the invited guests tonight, Governor Pataki, Mayor Michael Bloomberg, and former Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. We'll, of course, have complete reaction to the speech and all the details of the speech tonight on Eyewitness News at 11. Reporting live on Capitol Hill, David Ushery, ABC7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, David. You can watch President Bush's State of the Union address live at 9 o'clock tonight right here on ABC7. 
Florida's Governor Jeb Bush says he is deeply saddened at his daughter's arrest on prescription fraud charges. 24-year-old Nicole Bush is charged with fraudulently trying to obtain the sedative Xanax from a pharmacy in Tallahassee this morning. In a statement, Governor Bush and his wife said this is a very serious problem. Unfortunately, substance abuse is an issue confronting many families all across our nation. Bush also asked the public to res the, also asked the media and the public to respect his family's privacy. And still ahead tonight, overdue pregnancies may cause problems for children later in life. Dr. Jay Adlersberg explains a little bit later on. Plus, see how you can reduce your car insurance rates. There are ways to save money, and we're going to tell you about them. You couldn't have missed this. Record-setting heat just about everywhere. We'll talk about that and the moisture to come in the forecast on its way. State 6. More people charged with trying to steal from World Trade Center charities. Only this time, you might be surprised to find out who they are. Then, a community bands together to restore a historic church. Next at 6 on Eyewitness News. The all-new Jeep Liberty. With the confidence of Command Track four-wheel drive, it lets nothing get in the way of your daily commute. Here's something that only Jeep gives you. Our 7100 powertrain pledge plus great low prices on Jeep Liberty. Have you been mattress shopping lately? All the gimmicks, the promises, and dealing with those so-called professionals for a decent price? That's why I trust the real bedding experts from Macy's. They won't be undersold, so I know I'm getting the best possible price. It's Macy's Home Sale. Reserve now and save 50% plus 10% and extra dollars off selected Posturepedic and Perfect Sleeper styles with no payments or interest for six months. For the guaranteed low price, come to Macy's or call 1-800-MACY-BED. Remember that feeling of having to stay inside the lines? It's sort of like communicating on the internet today. Now imagine an internet service that lets you fully express yourself. Break the boundaries with AT&T WorldNet Service Plus. After all, why just send a typeface when you can send your face with video email? And with the most reliable connections, our instant messaging and chat will keep you connected. Plus, you can get web access by phone free until March, so you can check your emails from anywhere. All from the internet service named Best ISP by PC World. And all for just $16.95 a month, nearly 30% less than AOL. Now get one month free when you sign up for AT&T WorldNet service. So call 1-800-WORLDNET today and kiss ordinary ISPs goodbye. AT&T WorldNet Service Plus. Pretty hot, huh? Janie, time to eat. Janie, dinner. Okay, Mom. Just one more page? Okay. This moment brought to you by Sylvan Learning Center. I didn't like reading. Then they showed me it was fun. We call our approach the Sylvan Advantage. It's individual attention from highly trained and certified teachers, plus progress reports for you. If your child is struggling or not being challenged enough, call Sylvan at 1-866-6-EDUCATE today. Have you seen Trista? ABC7 urges you to protect our children. Time for weather. Sam Champion is in. Talk to the postman today, the mail carrier. Amazed at the weather. Everywhere I went today, people said, wow, this is unbelievable. It Did really is. Did ring twice? <laughs> Not at my house. <laughs> Just checking. Just Maybe checking. Your place. Just checking. <laughs> who is that? The postman always Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson and Nicholson. the girl who played King Kong's girlfriend. And who was that? Was Jessica Lange. Oh, How did you twice. even know oh, Jessica Lange? Lange. All right. Okay. Not, I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> Goodness. All right. With that said, we got to get to record temperatures. And we'll just leave King Kong and the postman all aside for right now. Uh, and talk about 68, 70 degrees around the area. Some beautiful temperatures. Now, look at these guys. Yeah, we're all dreaming about 
about April, but this is the last bit of it. And talk about temperatures dropping in. New Scott for 7 kind of hanging around uh, Long Island City and giving you a shot into the city. Now, with those temperatures holding today, it was beautiful all afternoon. No matter where you stepped your foot outside, it was gorgeous. 65 degrees outside right now. Relative humidity at about 61%. The barometer rising at this point. And again, a number of places coming in with very mild readings. West winds help ushering in those milder temperatures at 6 miles per hour, 69 degrees, the warmest number in the city. Normal temperature would be 38 degrees, rainfall and unreported today. New York City, Newark, Bridgeport, Trenton, Philadelphia, just a sampling of some of the temperatures, 69, 70, 72 degrees. Now let's talk a bit about the drought situation. Yesterday we told you we'd go back and go through the numbers of rainfall totals at the years. And as we went back from 1995 to 2002, only one year came in on the plus side of rain, and that was 1995. So if you go back to 95 and you start totaling up, we are in a large deficit that extends all the way back to 95 and beyond. That means we've been about 34 point, almost 35 inches of moisture in the hole to where we should be during those years. Now that's based on statistical averages, talking about getting a certain amount of rainfall every year, what's normal or average in the area, and we just haven't been able to achieve it for a long time. That is why we've gotten into the problem that we have for rainfall totals. Moisture starts coming in, but as you can see, no amount of small moisture or rain is going to help us get out of the drought. Mostly cloudy skies and mild overnight tonight, 48 degrees. And for tomorrow, a bit of moisture gets in. It's cloudy, it's cooler. You'll notice the temperatures dropping tomorrow. Some scattered showers around the area. Rain and drizzle tomorrow. And then there will be some icy moments north and west tomorrow night. With the city temperature at 34, northwestern areas will be a bit cooler and some of that moisture will be a little frosty on the road surfaces. That's tomorrow night, not tonight. Tonight's nice and mild, and we'll talk more about it when we come back in just a few minutes. Excellent. Thank yeah. you, Sam. Well, who wouldn't want to lower their car insurance rates? There are many ways you can save money that you might not know about. Seven on your side's Taffy Phillips is here with some tips that'll keep more dollars in your wallet. Taffy? We hope so. New York drivers hang on to your wallets and your steering wheel. This year, it's going to cost anywhere from 10 to nearly 20% more to insure. But we have some tips to lighten the load with Seven on your side. I was shocked. I thought they made a mistake. It was a case of sticker shock when Evelyn Shevick opened her latest auto insurance bill. Her premium jumped a hundred dollars. It keeps going up and up every six months. But Evelyn steered her way to savings, lowering her bill nearly 10 percent by taking a defensive driving class offered by her insurance company. It can save you for three years uh, somewhere between $300 and $1,500 on your premium every year. Other rate reducers, you may be entitled to a good student discount if your teen scores well in school. The average and above usually will get uh, a discount. And if you have either airbags, anti-lock brakes, or an alarm, your rates could be further reduced. Each item, it could be anywhere between a 3% or a 10% discount. You can even save money on insurance before buying your car. Just ask your agent one question. So call your agent and say, how much would these particular cars cost to insure? A Kia Sportage may cost $3,000 less than its competitor, the Honda CRV, but you'll wind up paying an average of $350 more per year in car insurance for the Kia. You may think you're saving a lot of money uh, just buying a cheaper vehicle. In the long run, you may not be. That's because it costs more to repair some cars than others. Some stand up better in a collision. Some are stolen more often. All factors that are reflected in your premiums. So do your homework. You could lower your insurance somewhere between 10 and 20 percent if you do all of those things. Mm -hmm. Another thing, another thing that can keep your car insurance rates down, a good credit rating. But there are some insurance myths. For example, many people think that rates for a red car are higher than for other cars. Mm -hmm. Forget about that. Keep the credit good. Go out and buy that red car. Good idea. Yeah. Thank you, Tappy. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tappy. We have much more ahead in our next half hour, including the amazing story oh of a World Trade Center eight. burn victim who I was released God, from the eight. hospital. Also, a new fight for Mike Tyson. He's battling to get a new boxing license. We have a live report. Plus, a history-making day for the New York City Fire Department. We will explain coming up on Eyewitness News. This is the most lackluster pigskin party ever. You need help. Honey? Spicy. Who are you calling, honey? 
Who are you calling spicy? I'm talking about KFC Honey Barbecue Wings and Spicy Barbecue Wings. They're drenched in sauce for that big time flavor. KFC Honey Barbecue Wings made with real honey and Spicy Barbecue Wings made with smoked jalapeno. Get eight for $2.99 or 20 for only $7.49. Hey Jim, throw me a wing, I'm open. <laughs> there's fast food and then there's KFC. Don't forget to load up on KFC Wings for the big game. Hey, Mike, do you and Maggie ever think about, you know, swapping? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your wife is into that? Definitely. And the kids. Kids? <laughs> okay, here are my keys. Let me get yours. <laughs> Perfect. We're in! Chrysler Town & Country. With a variety of models, available power sliding side door and lift gate, some people just have to try them all. Hey there. Exclusively from Chrysler. Our 7100 powertrain pledge, 2000 cash allowance, or low financing. Something Honda, Toyota, and GM don't give you. ABC 7 on Witness News. Sun. Come play. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right now. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right now. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. I have to go now. If an overactive bladder makes you go and go and go, go to your doctor and ask about Detrol LA. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Just one daily dose works for 24 hours to help control bladder contractions that cause those sudden urges and reduces accidents and bathroom visits. You need a break? Not right now. Prescription Detrol LA. Individual results may vary. You shouldn't take it if you have certain kinds of stomach, urinary, or glaucoma problems. The most common side effects are dry mouth, constipation, abdominal pain, and headache. And I don't have to go right now. Ask your doctor about Detrol LA for overactive bladder. When you've always got to go. When I got hurt on 88, I said, God, save me, and he did. A desperate prayer answered for World Trade Center victim Elaine Duke. She was on the 88th floor when the first plane hit. She was given last rites before she was rushed to the hospital, but today she headed home. That's right. Our own Art McFarland was there at New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Burn Center. That's where Elaine Duke underwent seven surgical procedures, and that's where she told her incredible story of survival before she headed home. Elaine Duke was in a coma for weeks before realizing she was a hospital patient and a burn victim. It was till it was about a month ago when I woke up when someone told me that it was a plane that hit. I had no idea. She was on the job as an administrative assistant for the Port Authority when the first plane struck Tower 1. The office was on the 88th floor. There was like fire. I was in the hallway in my office and then all of a sudden it was like a fire. And if I was a few feet further in, I would have been probably blown up. With the help of other survivors, Ms. Duke was able to take an elevator to the sky lobby on the 44th floor and then was walked down a stairwell and out of the building. Once outside, she ran into emergency medical technician Paul Adams, who has since become a friend. We just turned around, we uh, grabbed her, put her on a stretcher, uh, rendered patient care, and then uh, we got out of the scene before the first collapse. And then me and my partner went back in. Ms. Duke was brought to New York Cornell Weill Medical Center on the evening of September 11th after being transferred from a downtown hospital while doctors say they have high hopes for her recovery, they point out she was brought here in very grave condition. She had burns over 77% of her body, and she also had a severe injury of her lungs. But Ms. Duke, also a survivor of the World Trade Center attack in 1993, is feeling pretty lucky. I don't know what I plan on doing. Maybe take a nice long vacation. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely Atlantic City. <laughs> On the Upper East Side of Manhattan, Art McFarland, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Wow, what a lady. 
Thousands of people who lost their jobs on September 11th looked for employment today at the Javits Center Jobs Fair. It is the fourth event of its kind since the attack, an effort to match people in hundreds of companies looking for help. The event ran for six hours. The first three expos matched 750 people with jobs at about 100 different companies. And Lower Manhattan received an economic boost today with the grand opening of the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Battery Park. Mayor Bloomberg led the VIP list, cutting the ribbon for the 298-room hotel. Yankee manager Joe Torre checked, it, checked in as the hotel's first guest. The Ritz-Carlton is the first major new business to open in the downtown area since the September 11th attack. Well, tonight there's a new fight for boxer Mike Tyson. He's asking officials in Nevada to grant him a new boxing license so he can fight Lennox Lewis in April. These are live pictures from the hearing underway right now in Las Vegas. Now, this request comes just a week after the two went at it at a Midtown press conference that was supposed to publicize the boxing match. ABC's Craig Gropper is live in Las Vegas now with the details for us. Craig, good evening. Hi, Rob. Mike Tyson is right now in front of Nevada's Athletic Commission making his case for a license. Now, if he is to fight again here in Las Vegas, he's going to have to get approval from three out of the five commissioners, and they are expected to vote sometime within the next couple of hours. Mike Tyson is asking the Nevada Athletic Commission for permission to fight in their state. He's here to account for the melee he started last week while promoting a bout with boxer Lennox Lewis. His opponent claims Tyson bit him during the brawl. The burden of proof is on the applicant to establish to the satisfaction of the commission that the applicant is qualified to receive a license. Tyson hasn't fought in the state since 1999. Now your decision today obviously is not whether Mike Tyson will meet Lennox Lewis for the heavyweight championship of the world, <clears throat> but simply whether the match will be held in Nevada. The former champ has faced this panel before. Commissioner suspended his license in 1997 after he took a bite out of Evander Holyfield's ear during a rematch. The commissioners have told Tyson time and again to clean up his act, but he continues to get into skirmishes. Besides the tussle with Lewis, earlier this month he exhibited bizarre behavior while in Cuba. Today, the commission's decision is a difficult one. The Tyson-Lewis fight would bring a financially depressed Las Vegas hundreds of millions of dollars. The fight is expected to be the highest grossing fight in boxing history, wherever it takes place. Indeed, even if the commission refuses to relicense Tyson, the fight could still take place in another state or another country. The World Boxing Association has indicated that it will sanction this fight, the Lewis-Tyson bout, anytime, any place. I'm Craig Gropper, live in Las Vegas. Rob, back to you in New York. All right, thank you, Craig. Further west, the earth shook a wide section of Southern California last night as more than a dozen small earthquakes rippled through the area. Seismologists say as many as 18 small quakes were centered six to seven miles northeast of Simi Valley. That's about 35 miles outside of downtown L.A. There were no reports of damage or injuries. Scientists believe the quakes are the aftershocks of the huge Northfield earthquake of 1994. Rob, in South America, search teams have finally located the wreckage of the Ecuadorian airliner that crashed early yesterday morning. Government officials say the plane went down near the Cheles volcano that straddles the border between Ecuador and Colombia. The Boeing 727 went down carrying 92 people. It will take rescue workers several hours to reach the remote site. No word yet on survivors. This is the second crash in the border region this month. And when we come back, new concerns about having an overdue pregnancy. Seven's on call with the details. And the M&M Candy Company is facing a colorful lawsuit. We'll explain when we come back. You're watching ABC7 Eyewitness News. We're in your neighborhood. On your street. We're your eyes. Your ears. From the heart of the city, Live in Brooklyn, in the Bronx. to communities all around, Long Island, Westchester, Connecticut, New Jersey, you're watching ABC7 Eyewitness News. Some people like the original. spicy. The Civic. Get a taste at your Honda dealer. 
For a limited time, get special APR financing as low as 2.9% for 36 months on new Civics. Don't let the name fool you. You actually have to go out to cash in on the savings during Levitt's Stay Indoors sale. So venture out for this. Low sale prices on the furniture you want, and you won't even have to dip into your wallet. Levitt's preferred customer card takes care of it with no money down, no payments, and no interest until February 2003. Or pay now and take an extra discount. With new furniture from Levitt's, you won't mind staying indoors. Closed captioning provided by your Lexus dealers. It's me, Elmo! <laughs> it's Sesame Street Live's all-new Big Bird Sunny Day Campout featuring Elmo's World. Hi, kids. It's me, Big Bird. Live on stage, bigger than life, Broadway-style family fun. It's Big Bird's Sunny Day Campout featuring Elmo's World. Don't miss the fun at the theater at Madison Square Garden, February 6th through the 18th. Tickets available at the box office in all Ticketmaster locations. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that's our loan package. Any questions? Shopping for a home loan is a major financial decision, but finding the right loan with a low rate doesn't have to be difficult. Excuse us. Just log on or call Ditech.com. You may be able to refinance to a low fixed rate with zero points and cash out some equity. Oh, lost another loan to Ditech. Apply online or call us now at 1-800-71-FIX. Whose invention is it? That is the question a judge will have to answer in a lawsuit filed against the Eminem Mars Candy Company. A New Jersey man says he lost his job after trying to get a patent for an invention that is now helping the company. New Jersey reporter Marcus Solis has the story. What could that three-pronged device have to do with M&Ms? Well, a few years ago, Richard Connect designed the bracket to secure an oil can to his garage workbench. It worked so well, he modified it to hold larger cans. And then pop it out. Connect then installed several at the M&M's plant where he worked for 17 years. They held cans of silicone used to lubricate the chutes through which bags of candy were dropped. And then I got the feedback from everybody. They said, God, that is incredible. Why don't you do something with it? But when Connect tried to patent his device, he was fired. Eminem Mars requires all employees to sign a document stating any invention is the company's property. Connect says the agreement shouldn't apply to something he dreamed up in his garage. They don't own it. Um, this is American, and I believe that, you know, when you come up with a, a, an idea, uh, you have every right as an American to, to market that idea and and take advantage of it. For its part, m and Mars doesn't stand to make any money off of the invention. The company is not seeking a patent on the device. A company spokesperson says the issue may seem trivial, but it's a matter of principle. In a statement, the company maintains intellectual property law stipulates that in order to protect its intellectual property, a company must be consistent in its enforcement of its agreements. That's nonsense. They're a candy manufacturer, not a bracket manufacturer. They were just trying to, they were trying to get a freebie here. Today, M&M's is launching a national campaign looking for a new color. Take Connect this. is thinking Cannot green. He's well. suing for lost wages and so punitive damages, claiming he was wrongfully terminated. Okay. Last week, a judge ruled the case can go to trial. In Hackettstown, Marcus Solis, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Ooh, we'll follow that one for you. Diana Williams now in the newsroom with a preview of what's ahead on Eyewitness News at 6. Hi, Diana. And good evening to you, Robin. We are following a lot of stories coming up on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. We told you about the drought. We'll also tell you why some people are welcoming our water woes. We'll show you a booming business in parts of the tri-state area. And ordinary items transformed by disaster into relics from a lost world. An up-close look at some of the mementos recovered from ground zero. And it's been a shrine on Staten Island for a century, but now a historic church is feeling the effects of time. In tonight's Extra, a congregation's plea for help. Also, why some members of the city council want to reprimand Rudy. We've got those stories and much more coming up at 6 o'clock, and we hope you'll join us. Now we go back to Roz and Rob down in the studio. Thank you, Diana. Some New York City school students will make history when they take part in the next space shuttle launch. As part of an experiment, the kids will be sending off a number of items on the shuttle mission set for July. The items include a metro card, 
plant seeds, x-ray film, and camera parts. They'll be stored in a NASA space capsule on board the shuttle. The students will then examine the impact of space and zero gravity on the items when the shuttle returns. I don't know what that would do to a Metro card. But I like that story. Good idea. I got a few things. We can send it along here. with them. I'm sure we'll give them a call. It is a first. Next on Eyewitness News, a history-making day for the NYPD at today's promotion ceremony. We'll explain. Plus, when will the temperatures finally fall back into a more normal range? Sam Champion with our five-day accurate weather forecast still ahead as we continue. From Just Shoot Me, George Siegel, and It's Sleepless in New York Week on Live with Regis and Kelly. Tomorrow morning at 9. On ABC 7. With a wider stance and a more powerful engine, the Ford Explorer 4x4 can take you anywhere. And with available third row seating, there's plenty of room for you and six of your best friends. Now get 0% financing or 2,000 cash back on the best-selling Ford Explorer 4x4. Hey, don't make me come back there. Huffman Coos Winter Sale has been extended, but only till Monday. Get the lowest prices of the season and pay nothing at all for a full year. But get here today, because when it's gone, it's gone for good. That's the beauty of Huffman Coos. Hurry, sale ends Monday. ABC 7 on Witness News. There's a reason Steve's hiding Boca burgers that are meatless with 70% less fat. Steve doesn't know they're meatless with 70% less fat. Boca, so delicious the only way to know is to read the box. That's right, Steve. R-E-A-D, the B-O-X. Boca, the taste will change you. I've had a revelation about being grateful to our firemen. Their allegiance has made quite a difference, I think, for all of us to see in this nation. Uh, they have had a great input to our feeling of patriotism and our feeling of strength. Kidda, Home Depot, and ABC7 proudly salute those who have dedicated themselves to the tri-state area community. Claim service, Geico gets you back on the road fast. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The fire department of New York City made a history today with the promotion of its first African-American woman to lieutenant. Ella McNair is a Brooklyn native and has been with the department for two decades. Her promotion comes at a time when the department is making extra efforts to diversify the ranks. Lieutenant Ella McNair, engine 283. It's the second time Lieutenant Ella McNair made history. The first 20 years ago when she was among the first women ever to join the fire department. Most of the women went through a lot of situations in the job when we came on. Um, but like I said today, most of that has been ironed out and most of us get along pretty good with the guys. Looking on like a proud father was retired firefighter Jim Tempro. He's also Ella's neighbor and he encouraged her to join. He told me how great the job was, and he told me just go for it. This is a, a momentous day for me. It's a, a happy day for me. It really is. But this is her day, not mine. In the fire department of the city of New York. It was also Douglas White's day. Sworn in as deputy commissioner, he'll look to recruit more minorities and women. Commissioner Scapetta says the department has already started to make progress. This last class that we swore in, in two, on Tuesday uh, had 15% uh, candidates of color. That is a significant jump over prior classes. And the theme of diversity was struck by the chief of the department as he spoke of heroism during the terrorist attacks. On September 11th, men and women of all ethnicities and all faiths rushed to and into the World Trade Center to help men and women of all ethnicities and all faiths. 
And as the department continues to mourn, some say the promotion of Lieutenant Ella McNair shows it's also a department that is moving ahead. I think it's a great uh, chance for the department to show the city that, uh, you know, women and people of color can succeed in this organization. Commissioner Scapetta also said that he will appoint a deputy commissioner to help the families of the firefighters who were killed in the terror attacks. And can I just, you know, we did a tease and I said it was a big day at the uh, New York City Police Department right. when in fact, of course, it was the FDNY yeah. and I just want him to know I'm not crazy. Sometimes no, it was I on sort the of page lose my way. way. Your defense. No right defense. There. You know, I'm just in the ozone today. But congratulations to Madam McNair. It's a good and day to be in the ozone. It, it's a perfect day to be in the ozone, as a matter of fact. I mean, you don't get them any <laughs> better like than this. Me. No, Really like, really like me. Oh, it's more than like at this point. It's a whole lot of love. It. We'll walk over to the wall. We'll show you what it's like. It is and has been a beautiful day. Even this evening, just kind of if you're out and about, you've got this feeling that, you know, this is one of those special ones, and it truly was. New York City's high temperature, 69 degrees. Newark coming in at above 70. Bridgeport, 59. And even Trenton at about 69. Actually, Bridgeport was up there at 69 degrees as well. So all of this mild air around the region, and now we're looking for a bit of moisture. Back off to the west, there's not a whole lot there, but tomorrow there could be showers and sprinkles throughout the day as some of this trails up along a front. Basically, a front line is going to straddle the area. Several small systems are going to carry some moisture across the region, and there's the front line overnight. Tonight kind of brings in some cloudy skies. One or two of those lows will move by in the next two days, each of them carrying some moisture, dropping a little casual sprinkle or a shower here or there. Not that we're looking to pick up a whole lot out of this system, but the issue is bringing in some cooler air and the time timing of the system on Thursday. Now we've got this first impulse of low pressure and that storm exits on Thursday. That brings in the colder air from the north and it also brings in the next system. So on Thursday we may have a combination of the two here at some point. Wednesday night on into Thursday that does allow for a little freezing line or a freezing mix line right through the area. Finally changing over we think to the bulk of rain but there could be a little icy situation Wednesday night into Thursday and again later in the day on Thursday. So we've got to watch that one very carefully. Overnight tonight, no issue with freezing. The temperatures are still very mild. 39, 40 degrees. It looks like 47, 48 right through the middle of the region. And the clouds do move in. So you won't get a chance to see that big bright moon that was just coming off the full moon, by the way. Uh, the clouds will cover it up. So 42, 46 degrees down the Hudson Valley. 50 degrees tomorrow is we're looking at. Remember, not too long ago, we talked about low temperatures at the 50 degree mark. Now we're talking about highs. So the trend is down to cooler temperatures. And you'll definitely notice as we're right back to normal normal by the weekend. Temperatures in the 30s and holding there, we think, for a couple of days. So your forecast looks like this on the five day. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And there are two days that you've got probably a little moisture concern. Wednesday, when it comes in, it's all wet because we still have that 50 degree temperature. Thursday, with a temperature of about 38 degrees all day, there may be some moments and some places around the region where one or two places will get a little icy. Friday, it's windy. Gusty winds come in here. 26 degree low temperature there. Then look at Saturday all those low temperatures in the 20s and highs only in the 30s, so we're back to cool air by that point. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Sweet. Well, the 8th Annual Screen Actors Guild has come up with its nominees for Best Performances in Movies and on Television. In Los Black Angeles this morning, SAG honored performances of CSI, Madness, Desperation, scene, Dedication, and Sheer Guts. Outstanding performance by a male in a leading role, Russell Crowe for Beautiful Mind. Kevin Klein, Life as a House, Sean Penn, I Am Sam, and Denzel Washington, Training Day. Also, Tom Wilkinson in The Bedroom. Outstanding performance by a female in a leading role. Halle Berry in Monsters Ball. Jennifer Connelly, A Beautiful Mind. Judy Dench, Iris, Judy Dench for Iris. Sissy Spacek in Bedroom. And Renee Zellweger in Bridget Jones' Diary. The winner will be announced March 10th. Well, tonight there are new concerns about having an overdue pregnancy. Next on Eyewitness News, Dr. Jay Adlersberg is on call with new information on the effects of prolonged pregnancies. That is next. Next at 6. More people charged with trying to steal from World Trade Center charities, only this time you might be surprised to find out who they are. Then, a community bands together to restore a historic church. Next at 6 on Eyewitness News.
Compared to Honda Civic and Ford Focus, Dodge Neon ES gives you more cool features, like 132 horsepower, six-speaker CD sound system, spoiler, and fog lamps. For thousands less, just something to reflect on. Grab Dodge's 7100 powertrain protection pledge. Ford, GM, and Toyota don't have it. The brain basically has two sides. The right side, which is the pizza side, or the left side, which is the sandwich side. Thanks to the revolutionary new Pazone from Pizza Hut, the conflict between the two sides is over. Finito. No mas. Because the Pazone is the pizza you eat like a sandwich. It's mozzarella cheese and tantalizing toppings sandwiched calzone style. 51 cubic inches of perfection. So big, we dare you to eat it alone. $5.99 or have a Pazone party. Two for $10.99. The Pazone revolution. Only at Pizza Hut. Join us. Right now, you're going to like talking to Verizon for a number of reasons. You know, it could knock some numbers off your phone bill. Why not give us a call and see for yourself how much you could save? We're standing by, ready to listen to your needs and share all the ways we can save you money. In fact, we're so confident we'll know how to save you money. We'll give you 30 free minutes of long distance if we don't. No strings attached. All you have to do is call 1-888-247-8587 by February 15th. It's that simple. So what are you waiting for? You've got absolutely nothing to lose, except maybe a few numbers on your phone bill. Call 1-888-247-8587 now. We think you'll like talking to us for a number of reasons. Verizon. This week, Wheel of Fortune is giving away trips to the world's most romantic spots. Don't miss Romantic Destinations Week. Tonight at 7.30, right here on ABC7. In medical news, new research about pregnancies that go beyond the normal 40 weeks. Dr. Jay Adlersberg is on call with the details for us. Jay. Roz and Rob, there's been very little research on the long-term effects of a prolonged pregnancy. But now there is research, and it points to the possibility of developmental problems as children grow up. Christine Zaharidis just had her baby yesterday. Baby's Tiffany baby's was born perfectly healthy at 41 weeks. Though fetal testing was normal after the 40-week mark, Christine was still concerned. When it comes close to the due date, when you even wish it would be either on the due date or before, and then when it starts getting later, it's every day you start getting anxious. There's reason for some concern. After the normal 40 weeks, fetuses grow bigger and are more difficult to deliver. These immediate problems are known, but new research from Dr. Michael Devon says trouble may surface years later. This study tells us that prolonged pregnancy may be associated with some adverse long-term outcomes to the child. Dr. Devon followed almost 300 children born after 42 weeks or more of pregnancy. By the age of four to five, six percent of these kids had problems with fine muscle movements, speech problems, or attention deficit disorders, compared to three percent of children born at 37 to 41 weeks. Prolonged pregnancy did not result in any vision or hearing problems or any differences in growth. However, there was a larger head size at one year among prolonged pregnancy infants. Ultrasound is much better at determining fetal age than counting from the last missed period. Doctors can also use it after 40 weeks to check for fetal stress. If fetal distress is present, the OB may induce labor. Why do problems happen after 40 weeks? In some pregnancies, the placenta beginning at some point after term, be it 42 weeks of gestation, just cannot sustain that pregnancy anymore. The placenta is just not good enough anymore for what the fetus needs. Because this is one of the first studies on children of prolonged pregnancies, much more research is needed to predict which infants may have developmental problems. For more on prolonged pregnancy and child development, see our website, mat7online.com. Roz and Rob. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for watching Eyewitness News at 5. For Roz Abrams, Sam Champion, and the entire Eyewitness News team, I'm Rob Hanrahan. The news continues now with Bill Ritter and Diana Williams. And coming up next on Eyewitness News at 6, Port Authority workers charged with stealing thousands of dollars designated for Trade Center attack victims. Prosecutors say they did it by duping the Red Cross.
Backlash from a last minute baseball deal. Why some on the New York City Council now want to reprimand Rudy Giuliani. And a booming business that's tapping into our water woes. Well drillers are getting a flood of new orders. And ordinary items taking on a whole new life as relics salvaged from ground zero. And tonight's extra a time worn church in trouble and a community campaign to save it. We have those stories and much more next on Eyewitness News at 6. Tomorrow morning to find the major highway that's become a major headache. I'm Joe Nolan. I'll make you aware of the traffic problems before you hit the road so you don't get stuck. That plus your wake up forecast. Watch Eyewitness News this morning, tomorrow morning only on ABC 7. Okay, Toyota's trucks and SUVs are tough, so we need to find someone. A hard body. Yes. But good looking. Excellent. Quietly powerful. Good. Well, that describes Forerunner. Soda's affordable because now you can get $1,000 cash back or 2.9% APR financing. In fact, big savings across the board make all our SUVs very attractive. Hard body, quietly powerful, good looking. Start searching. I'm all over it. like the original. Dan and Fruit on the Bottom. You train every day. You get better every day. You make us proud every day. Dan and passionately supports the winning spirit of the U.S. ski team. Look for specially marked packages at A&P and Waldbaums. Hey, Mike, do you and Maggie ever think about, you know, swapping? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your wife is into that? Definitely. And the kids. Kids. Okay, here are my keys. Let me get yours. Perfect. We're in! Chrysler Town & Country, with a variety of models.